It is important to feel safe and increase your safety whether you're living in a violent relationship, are thinking about leaving the violent relationship, or have already left. Safety planning is a process that involves identifying action steps to increase your safety and also prepare ahead of time for the possibility of further violence. Make sure that the safety plan is kept in a safe place where an abusive partner cannot find. One aspect of a safety plan is an emergency escape plan. This escape plan prepares you to leave immediately in the case you have to leave a violent situation. Some things to consider are, one, make a photocopy of the following items and store in a safe place, away from the originals. Hide the originals someplace else if you can. Two, it is best to keep all the cards you normally use or copies of them in your wallet. Three, keep your wallet and purse handy and containing the following. Four, keep the following items handy so you can grab them quickly. Five, remember that when dialing 911, there is no charge from a payphone nor your cell phone. The police are there to keep you safe. If there is a language barrier and you do not feel comfortable communicating in English, it is possible to just state the language you need and the police will connect interpretation services that will provide support in the language specified. Additional suggestions for a safety plan is split into whether you live with the abuser or not. If you live with them, there are a few suggestions to consider at home. Get your emergency escape plan in order and review it often. Create a list of telephone numbers including local police, nearest women's transition house shelter safe homes, crisis lines like Victim Link BC, family members, friends, counselors, as well as children's friends. Make arrangements with friends or families so that you can stay with them if necessary. Notice what triggers your partner's violence. This can help you try to predict the next likely incident and give you a chance to prepare. If you have call display on your phone, be careful about who can get access to stored numbers, such as the last number you dialed or received the call from. You can also regularly erase stored numbers. You can also create a safer environment by checking your vehicle for a GPS, which your abuser may have installed in or under your car. Look for anything that appears out of the ordinary and like it has been added on. Create a safe word or a code word with your children, family, or friends so that they know when to call for help. Plan your emergency exit so that you can leave immediately when in danger or if you are in fear. Be aware of any weapons in the home or your partner's access to weapons. When using the computer, be aware that your abuser may track the websites you have visited. Here are a few suggestions in the case you are not living with your abusive partner. Tell those who know of your whereabouts to tell your abusive partner, if asked, that they do not know where you are or how to contact you. Change the locks on the doors, windows, garage, and mailbox. If possible, install an alarm system. You may be eligible for such protective measure benefits under the Provincial Crime Victim Assistance Program. You can connect with your community victim services worker to get support in applying to victim services, and they can also assist you with emotional support, safety planning, accompaniment to criminal court, and information about the criminal justice system and the court process. Keep doors and windows locked at all times. Have a pre-recorded anonymous message on your telephone answering service rather than your own voice, and do not identify yourself by name. Carry a cell phone and a personal alarm. Keep a copy of your protection order near you at all times and inform your friends, colleagues, and family that you have a protection order in place. If your protection order is destroyed or lost, you can obtain another copy from the VSU, the Victim Safety Unit, who can also provide you with ongoing notifications regarding an accused offender who is being supervised by the BC Corrections, either in custody or in the community. If your partner violates the protection order or is threatening you in any way, immediately call the police to report the violation. Key things to identify to the police 
are whether there has been a pattern of violence, whether your partner owns weapons or has access to them, your partner's use of drugs and alcohol, and any concerns in regards to mental health. Record all phone calls and messages. Save all emails, text messages, and Facebook social media contacts. And document all in-person contacts made by the abusive partner. Notice what triggers your partner's violence and abuse. This may help you predict the next likely violent incident and give you a chance to prepare. Consider rearranging your furniture as this is something your partner may not anticipate and it may cause them to bump into it and give you some warning. Put your kitchen utensils and knife block in the cupboard so they are not as easily accessible. Speak to your building manager if you live in an apartment to request increased safety measures in your building. Do whatever you can to increase security, including additional locks, window bars, pulls to wedges against doors and windows, an ele electronic system, and so forth. Electronic security measures when using the computer may also be helpful, including changing your passwords, creating new email addresses, blocking unwanted emails. If you agree to see your partner, meet in a public place and limit your isolation. Make sure someone knows where you are and when to expect you to return. Here are some tips when there is an anticipation for escaping a violent situation with your partner in the home. One, start to position yourself to get out quickly or near a phone so you can call 911 if necessary. Two, try to move to a space where the risk is the lowest. Try to avoid arguments in the bathroom, garage, kitchen, near weapons, or in rooms without access to an outside door. If you have been sexually assaulted, and if you choose to seek medical assistance, don't bathe or shower. Go directly to a hospital where a trained professional will examine you and be able to collect evidence. Keep the clothes you're wearing during the assault and don't wash them so that they can provide them to the investigating officer for use as evidence. During or after an assault, call the police at 911 if you can. Tell them you have been assaulted and that it is an emergency. Leave the phone off the hook after your call. Once you're in a safe place, have a friend or family member take photos of any injuries you sustained during the assault. This can also be done at the hospital if you choose to seek medical attention. Remember you have an emergency escape plan and go over it in your mind. Remember, you are not to blame for the violence. You are not responsible for your partner's abusive behavior. You cannot control your partner's violence, but it may be possible to increase your own safety. Your safety is always the most important thing. You are not alone. There are resources available in the community to provide support in a number of ways, whether that be counseling, housing, financial assistance, victim services, and so forth. You can create a safety plan on your own or get support from a Stopping the Violence program or outreach worker in your community. If you have left the relationship, are feeling down, and are considering returning to potentially violent situations, call a friend, relative, counselor for support, or phone Victim Link BC to access 24 hours, seven days a week crisis counseling and referrals to other organizations. Get connected to community resources. There are a lot of organizations that can help you and assist you in navigating the ways to services and supports that will meet your needs. Remember, one of the most important aspects of safety planning is taking care of yourself. If you have experienced violence or at risk of violence and feeling unsafe in the current place you are staying at, a transition house can be a good option to look into. A transition house is a confidential location which provides short to long-term shelter, usually around 30 days, and support services to women, children, and youth for those who have experienced or at risk of violence. Most staff at transition houses can support you with accessing counseling, get you connected with legal services, assist in income assistance, and a victim services worker so that they can support you in making informed decisions on what to do. 
Staff at Transition Houses can also work with you on creating a safety plan so you are safe when you decide to leave. Most transition houses are residential homes in confidential locations where women and families live communally. Confidential location means that the place you are staying at is safe and the address is not available to the public and cannot be Googled. If you are fleeing someone who has hurt you, they will not know your location. This means you will also not be able to tell your friends and family where you are staying at in order to protect the location. Transition houses are free to stay at, meaning you do not have to pay to stay at and are provided with food and basic necessities. Most transition houses are staffed 24 hours, seven days a week, and have a crisis line which can be accessed at any time. If you feel unsafe or unsure if you want to leave, you can call and be supported by staff on what to do next and understand your options. Most cities and towns have at least one transition house. If you are interested in staying at a transition house or want to learn more information about them, you can access information at BC Housing, Mosaic, as well as other community resources.